Right, welcome back. This is part two of ankle mobility and today we're working on the plantar flexion aspect or movement and the stiffness that's associated with that following an ankle sprain or an old stiff ankle. So instead of dorsiflexion, which we were working on last time, we're working on plantar flexion. Now, this is really common to lose the last few degrees, maybe 10 degrees of getting that movement there. And the reason being is because when you damage this part here, you can tighten up and scar up in that sort of area, especially the capsule part where that ligament blends with the capsule and you lose some of that last little bit of plantar flexion. Now, that will play havoc when you're playing a sport and running around as well. Obviously not as much as dorsiflexion, that's sort of, you know, if you're going to think of importance, that's probably more important, but some people still have this movement here and obviously when they go into inversion as well. Now, in my experience, it's usually people who've had a significant you know, grade two, two plus injury of the ATFL where they've damaged perhaps some of the capsule, they have significant fluid and effusion in there, and they've just gone through so much tightening and capture restriction through there, starts causing problems. So I'm going to show you today on Claire's ankle the plantar flexion mobs that we do to get that movement, and then we'll go through and show you what we're going to use with a power band just like last time. So with this movement here. Think of plantar flexion, obviously it's that movement there. Now people with a stiff angle are going to be probably a little bit higher and when you push on them that restriction may be there. They also might have a restriction in the back of the capsule. So if they've got a little capsulitis because they've been running too early on a stiff ankle, that tightness and that stiffness back there needs to be stretched out as well. So I'm going to give you a mobe to fix that and it's when you're in prone. So here you have a roll on your front for me. So with this, I'm going to show you on our left ankles, it's easier, come this way a little bit clear. What you've got to do, have a block of a towel as well, that goes under, again, same sort of rules, the tibia, give it a bit of an angle because you know about the tib and fib, and you've got to have the whole sort of ankle joint clear of that towel and clear of the bed because you don't want to be pushing the foot into the bed. So at that point, when you the thing of the angle of drive is going to be within the joint range. So if she's in that little bit of plantar flexion, I want the angle of drive going almost in line with her foot, if you know what I mean. So simple mode will be in this position. Now you can control plantar flexion, dorsiflexion with that. I'll just bring that back here so you can see. So I can see how much she's got there. And the drive is obviously just a straight PA. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> All right, okay, ready? Okay, we've obviously just had a bit of a laugh about that one. Um, that was a spontaneous manipulation or capitation of the joint. Now, what I didn't tell you on Claire's ankle, she's done all three ligaments in the past her ankle, so she said, oh, use my left ankle, it would be a good one. It is a stiff ankle, but that movement there is a clear indication that she does have stiffness that builds up and then gets released when you actually open the joint up. So it's not a grade four manipulation. I just went almost into a two, two plus and it cavitated. That's fine. We're not after that manipulation because we don't need to with her. We're after the stretch. Now you'll notice the first one happened and then the second one it doesn't. Okay, so sometimes you have to warn the patient a little bit about that. She knew that was coming, but those sort of things can happen and that's fine and it's safe for the joint. Remember, you're going to keep going and you're after the stretch into that PA direction. So when you do that one, again, same rules. I'm locking up the wrist, I'm locking up the elbow, I'm locking up the shoulder. I'm trying to drive my body weight down through there and I'm trying to get that plane really correct. You can make this person sore if you try and push down and push that basically talus and ram it into the joint. Remember, we're going, taking the calcaneus which then abuts on the tarsus and pushes the whole thing down. So you're going to get a little bit of glide in the calcaneus as well, which is a nice thing to do. But you're trying to get the whole joint moving into that posterior anterior direction, which is exactly the movement it's going to do when you go plantar flexion. So if you think this is the tibia and fib, when that person goes into plantar flexion, it rolls forward. All right. So we're doing this movement here to get that movement there, if that makes sense. So a PA, that's the go. Now I'll just start off loosening it up and get that until that's nice and loose. Be careful of how much tightness is going on there, how much pain is going on there. Obviously you're not going to ram and push through into pain and make it really sore. But after quite a few reps of that and sets of that, you may find the pain actually goes away. And you're going to have to go further into range. Now the way I do that is if you go forward a little bit for me, 
as you put her into more plant flexion. Okay, so we're thinking about put her into more in range or the range that she's got available, so then you've got to do the drive there. Now this one's harder because if you imagine the line of pull was this way, you've got to get your line of pull this way here. So I'd sort of stand back and think you've got to drive that way and then you can hold on to this leg and push it that way. So this is going a little bit more further in range. It's a little bit more advanced, but it does really help you get that mobilization further into range. A lot of people miss that, where they'll do a PA just in a neutral and then still not get the full plantar flexion. This is the way you can do it. And they may go even, if you clear that, go forward even more and you go right into plantar flexion, but not, I'm not meaning jamming it down there because that's going to hurt, especially the back capsule. You've got to be careful that you don't go and jam that. As once they get into that position, then you're really going to try and go and push that way. So it's a really nice deep stretch and the front, with people who've got an old capsule in the back, they might feel that as well, but it's a good feeling. And at the end of the day, have a flip on your back for me, as you'll find, you'll notice that this movement here has improved, okay? And they've loosened up through that movement there. So that's where we're after. Now, how are you going to do that at home? Let's check that out. All right, so doing that at home, you need a thicker power band than you did with the dorsiflexion. This has got to be pretty grunty. Not too full on because you won't be able to stretch, you won't be able to go forward, but enough to give you the drag like the pull or push that you get from the physio. So this one around something that's not going to move and then around the back of the heel but you've got to have your shoes on because the shoe will keep it in position just like my hand keeps, there, keeps it in position. So if you don't have a shoe it's going to slip straight off your heel always put the shoe on, put it in the back of the shoe, it'll come down and then hook on to that calcaneus. So go forward for me. So from that point, you're gonna to have to go into plantar flexion to start with, and then she creeps forward like a sort of a bear crawl, as far forward as she can possibly stretch this to get enough drag through that joint to get the PA direction, PA drag movement. So when she goes into plantar flexion, and she's gonna do that by sitting down, she's gonna get, there's the overpressure stretch. This is providing the correct posterior glide movement to stop the impingement and jamming that people normally get when they drop down with a stiff ankle. So this allows her to A, get into that position, but B, she's doing a glide with a stretch. Those two combined movements is how she's going to self-mode that at home and get that better. And as she improves, she just needs to go further forward. Same sort of reps, you know, you're just doing maybe three sets, four sets of 10 of this, and you'll, she'll probably feel like, there's stretching going on at the front of the ankle. You've just got to make sure there's no jamming pain in the back. So those are a word of caution on anyone who's got that capsulitis type sort of stiffness in the back part of the joint, you can't go in and jam it. Remember, the, the idea of the band is to try and stop that, but there's going to be certain limits on that, so just go careful with it. Don't push it too hard. So there's your plantar flexion. Let's see how that goes for your stiff ankles.